Hi, this is Ms. Black, Math 099, Open Campus from Bossier Parish Community College. We are now in Module 6, which is based on factoring. This today is Video 2 of Module 6. We've already discussed in the previous module what factoring means. Factoring means to rewrite something as multiplication. We've already learned the first rule of factoring, which is greatest common factor. But we're going to find out today that rule doesn't always apply. So if you go to your class notes, let's look at our first example. So let's go to the board. Today's rule of factoring is called grouping. I better know it as Noah's Ark, because if you think of the story of Noah's Ark, the animals got on the ark two by two. And that's what you're about to do. If all four of these terms do not have something in common, let's break them into smaller groups. Let's group them two by two, and then look at those smaller groups to see if we have something in common at GCF. So really, by doing grouping, we're going to do the GCF rule twice. We're going to look at these first two terms and say, ooh, b cubed plus 3b squared have a b squared in common. So we're going to take out the b squared, that's our GCF, and we're going to tell me what's left. b cubed divided by b squared is b. 3b squared divided by b squared is just a 3. Now, if you find the GCF of the first two terms, you must find the GCF of the last two terms. Positive 4x, positive 12, both have something in common. They could go be divided by positive 4. So that's their GCF. So we're going to write down their GCF, positive 4, and we're going to tell me what's left. 4b divided by 4 is b. Positive 12 divided by 4 is positive 3. So if you notice, we did the GCF rule twice. Now, this is not the final answer because it is not still connected by multiplication. Because when you read this expression, it's read b squared times b plus 3 plus 4. So that plus 4 is not connected by multiplication. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the GCF rule again. If you look, all of this and all of this have something in common. What do they have the same? The b plus 3. So we'll write that in front. Then if you divide by b plus 3, what would be left is the b squared. And if you divide this side by b plus 3, you'd be left with the positive 4. So when we do grouping, after we pull out the GCF of the first two terms and tell me what's left, and after we pull out the GCF of the second two terms and tell me what's left, you should be guaranteed to get two parentheses that look identical. If these parentheses did not look the same, that would tell you you factored wrong. You're going to take these parentheses that look the same and write them once, and then what's on the outside, the GCFs, you're writing its own parentheses. Now, this is connected by multiplication. So this is the final answer, factored. You'll know you're correct because you can check it doing your multiplication. A binomial, two terms, times a binomial, two terms, if you recall, is foiling. So if we do foil, let's check it. First would be b times b squared, which is b cubed. Your outers would be b times a positive 4, positive 4b. Your inners would be positive 3 times b squared, positive 3b squared. And your last 
positive 3 times positive 4, positive 12. So you'll always know you've done factoring correctly when you multiply the expression out and you get back to where you started. So if you notice, when you factor by grouping, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms always. You're going to group them like Noah's Ark, 2 by 2. And the final answer will always be two binomials. Okay, let's try another example in your class notes. So if we look now at expression four in your class notes, you have xy plus x minus y minus one. The directions specifically say to factor. Factor means to make this look like multiplication. Okay, the first rule of factoring is to see if they all have something in common, which they do not. They all don't have x's, all those terms don't have y's, so we can't do the GCF rule. But what we're going to do is we're going to group them. We're going to group the first two and the last two to see if the smaller groups have something in common. X, Y, and X can both be divided by what? Very good X. So you pull out the X, you tell me what's left. These X's are going to cancel and leave us with Y. These X's are going to cancel, but you can't leave it blank because there's a plus sign. So that's plus 1. A letter divided by itself is 1. Now, you must do the GCF of these terms. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I can't divide a letter and a number by the same thing. Well, you can. If you look, both this variable and number are negative. And you can divide them both by the number negative 1. Why would we want to divide them by a negative 1? Because we want to make a parentheses, and we want in this parentheses exactly what's here, a positive and a positive. And as you all know, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Now we know we did grouping correctly. The parentheses are identical. So we'll write that parentheses first, y plus 1, what they have in common. We'll write in the other parentheses what was on the outside, x minus 1. Every time you factor by grouping, you will have two binomials connected by multiplication. Now, let's just make sure we understand something. If somebody wrote this answer as x minus 1, times y plus 1, is that a different answer or is it the same answer? Well, it's the same answer. They both have a y plus 1, they both have an x minus 1. All you did was rearrange the order of multiplying. Well, though it goes back to third grade, if you think about it again, in third grade if I say 2 times 3 and you say 3 times 2, do we get different answers or the same answer? Well, that's the same answer. 6. So on arithmetic, if it doesn't matter what order you multiply in, then in algebra, it doesn't matter what order. So either one of these answers is acceptable. Okay, that's the end of module 6. Thank you.